Hey there, Scorpio. Good afternoon and welcome to your April Tarot reading. Scorpio, it's great to be able to connect with you. Uh, today is Monday, Monday afternoon. It's Monday, April the 11th. So welcome to Tree of Life Tarot. Whether you're a sun sign of Scorpio or your moon a rising sign of Scorpio, some of you may be here checking up on a Scorpio in your life. And others of you may just be intuitively guided to be here. So whatever the energies were that brought you here to this tarot reading, trust those energies. If you're here, you're here for a reason. I'm confident that if you're here, this entire reading may be meant for you, or it may just be a little piece of this tarot reading, of just something, an energy that you need to be aware of, right? Or messages that you may that may be beneficial for you to, to, to hear uh, and be aware of at your life at this specific time. So, Scorpio. And if you're not Scorpio and you're here, welcome. I'm, I'm excited to have all of our non-Scorpios here as well. Uh, you're in the right place. So, what's going on in the world? Well, where I live, the weather's been changing, right? And we've been getting up, taking on a lot more warmer temperatures. And I love the warmer temperatures, right? It's like I get, it seems like every year that goes by, it seems like I grow that much less fond of winter, right? With every passing year, right? The winters are just heavy and difficult for me to be, to get around and be around. So I really get encouraged when I see the temperatures changing, the warmer temperatures coming out and feeling more sunshine. So it's a great time to be alive. Uh, Scorpio, I'm going to share a little bit of a story with you. Just have some fun here for a minute. So as most of you know, right, I've been living with my daughter and, and her husband and my grandbabies, uh, renting out a room in their basement. So they left on vacation last week. So it's just been me there at the house with the dogs. And they have two dogs. Uh, I have my daughter's dog, Indy, which is the little white dog. Right? And then several months ago, they, they got a new dog, a Doberman Pinscher. Uh, which is, it's a puppy, right? But it's kind of big for a puppy. I mean, it's a tall dog. And it's it's kind of interesting because, you know, watching the dog around the, around the condo there, it's like, it reminds me of like a colt or brand new horse when it's born. How it's just heavy in the legs, but really clumsy. That's kind of how this dog is. So anyways, what, what was interesting is I've been taking care of the dogs, right? And taking care of them means making sure they're fed on time, watered on time, and I take them out for regular bathroom breaks. And I play with them and have a lot of fun with them. So Friday rolled around, and uh, the Doberman's name is Zara. Anyways, I went upstairs right away, and I took Zara out of her kennel. I took her outside. I let her do her business. She went pee and went poop. Uh, and then I brought her back inside, and I took her down in the garage, and I was getting her food out for her. So, you know, normally I'd have her eat her food and I'd take her right back up, put her in her kennel, and then I'd make it a point of taking her out one more time before I, before I went to work. But on Friday, I let her eat her food and then I just let her go back upstairs when she was done. And I stayed downstairs for about 10 minutes so I could get myself dressed and cleaned up and ready for work. You know, and it was, it was interesting because it couldn't have been more than 10 minutes, right? And things got kind of quiet. All of a sudden, Zara came down the stairs, and I'm looking at her, and she has these little white cotton fluffies on her body. And I'm like, oh, God, what did she get into? So I made my way upstairs, and I'm not kidding you. In 10 minutes' time, she took this big pillow. That's It's one of my favorite pillows on their couch. This big, soft pillow, and she had it in the middle of the floor, and she ripped it open. So there were feathers and balls of cotton literally in the entire room everywhere. And then to make matters worse, she went behind the couch and took a dump. So I had, those are the energies that I had to deal with on Friday, you know. And it was really interesting to experience that because, you know, I like to think that, you know, I'm big on unconditional love. And I love to feel the energy of unconditional love all the time. But on Friday, right there in that moment, oh my God, that dog tested me on my unconditional love. Because I had those moments where I could just feel the unconditional love leave my body. I was so upset. I was so frustrated with her. So it's interesting because I can look back on it now that I've got everything cleaned up and back in order. You know, you can look back on it and laugh. But wow, when I was right there and in those moments, boy, I really, I could feel the unconditional love just leaving my body. So anyway, Scorpio, I don't know why I shared that. I just like sharing some of what I experienced in life with all of you. So thank you for letting me share. All right, Scorpio, let's get into your tarot reading. Uh, we're asking about your April. So this month, 
And I want to begin your tarot reading by pulling an affirmation card for you to take us into your reading today. So let's just see which affirmation comes out for Scorpio. Tell us about Scorpio in April, please. Well, that came out quick. All right. So coming to you as your affirmation, taking us into your tarot reading for the month of April, you drew authenticity, which this is actually a beautiful energy. It says, well, the number 10, right, which reduces right back to a one. So ones represent beginnings, right? So some of you Scorpios may be in the energy where you're like, you're starting a brand new beginning in your life. And this is a very authentic beginning for you. This energy says, who I truly am is good indeed. I am authentic in thought, word, and deed. So Scorpio, if you're in that energy of like, hey, I'm getting ready to step into a new chapter in my life, I'm creating this beginning, make sure that it's a beginning that is perfectly suited for you, right? It's an authentic kind of beginning that you can really stand behind. All right, Scorpio, let's continue with your tarot reading. Uh, I'm going to change decks and switch over to my psychic tarot deck. And I want to begin by pulling energy for you from this deck. And this is going to kind of create the framework of what's happening with Scorpio in the month of, of April. Okay, interesting energy. Conflict and despair. First energy that comes to Scorpio, taking us into your April tarot reading. Um, you know, it's interesting. We're talking about a one, right? Authentic one in the beginnings. <clears throat> Notice the number five right here, right? So the number five represents changes, right? In conflict and despair, it's a, uh, if you're in this energy, Scorpio, or if you've been in this energy, right, you're ready for a new beginning right now. It's almost like maybe the new beginning is represented by this candle right here as he's staring down at this candle. So, you know, you, we've all heard the term, right? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's almost like, looking at this card closely, right? This is the flesh, right? The flesh is weak. So physically, what I feel like is I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm feeling conflicted and defeated. But notice these images back here, right? They are sprinting up the stairs. So what is letting us know, Scorpio, right? So spirit is, spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It means spiritually, you're ready for this new beginning, right? You're ready for this change. Let's continue to clarify. Tell us more about Scorpio in the month of April, please. Tell us about Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio, coming in next for you, you have Virgo's energy coming to us by way of solitude. So it's representing the energy of the Hermit card. Some of you, right? I mean, what happens when you're a little conflicted and defeated? You know, when you're feeling, you know, those, those moments of despair, well, typically what most of us do is we go inward, right? This is a time to like, ah, I just need to take some time. I need to be alone. I need to be by myself. I need to better understand what's going on in my life right here. So that's the energy that solitude is representing. Let's continue to clarify. Please clarify April for Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio, we have two energies coming in for you. We have Leo's energy showing up now, coming to us by way of power, right? So what, is, what you're being reminded of with power, Scorpio, is, you know, a lot of times, depending on what's happening in your life, you know, the conflicts and the defeats, inevitably, the, the effect that they can have on us is they can cause you to feel like, yeah, I've just lost my power. Um, but you're being reminded, right? <laughs> Not that you need this reminder because spiritually, you know you have this power. Look at these spiritual images sprinting back up the stairs. You're being reminded that you have your power. You may need to go inward and process, right? Why was I in this conflicted, defeated energy? Uh, and it may be you're going inward that gives you the ability to better understand what took place and to be able to pull into your resources of your inner power and strength. And you are opening up yourself to choosing wisely, coming in next. Seven of Cups energy right here. Um, so it's almost like once you get your power back, 
Now I realize I have so many choices, different opportunities and direction to go right here. Uh, I'm in the energy of feeling anything but conflicted and defeated. It's almost like you wanna get past this energy, get your power back, and then open yourself up to, I have a lot of choices. Okay, Scorpio, let's clarify. Uh, for your clarifications, I'm going to use my Crystal Vision Tarot set. And let's begin by clarifying conflict and defeat. Please clarify conflict and defeat for Scorpio. Nine of Cups wanted to come out for you. So, you know, Nine of Cups, very independent energy, right? Some of you may have made a choice, right? It's like, I need to make a choice and a decision in life, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm going, you're going after what you want, right? Energies that will serve you best. And she's sitting on this stump right here next to this pond of water, right? And she's thinking about, what do I want in my life? My hopes, my wishes, my dreams. So she takes out her dandelion and she makes a wish and she blows it up to the universe as above so below right so she's she's creating and she's manifesting but for some of you scorpios this may not have worked out very well for you because it's coming in attached to conflict and defeat please clarify the nine of cups for scorpio justice showed up so justice is representing libra's energy um Justice could also represent the energy. Of, it could be legal matters, right? And I don't feel like that won't be the case for all of you, right? But it may be the it may be the case for some of you. As you know, it's at the end of the day, I was I was just hoping to get a good ruling from this, but you know, you wanted a ruling, right, that would serve you, right, and serve you effectively. But at the end of the day, right, it wasn't the ruling that you were looking for. Uh, so it put you in the energy of feeling conflicted and defeated. And then with Libra attached to the Nine of Cups, right? This could represent the energy of a legal situation for some of you. All right. Tell us more about conflict and defeat. Well, the nice thing for you, Scorpio, is, you know, look at the weather always matters, right? In the tarot cards, right? Just look at the image and look at... The, Look at kind of the scenery of what's going on. This is a darker, heavier kind of energy right here. But I don't feel like you're going to get stuck in that energy for long. In fact, this just came to me. Scorpio, what some of you may have done is you had a choice and a decision to make, right? I could go my way and do what's going to serve you best. And if you did, that's going to bring you justice, right? Fairness and balance. Um, some of you may have made the choice, right, that I'm going to go the other direction instead, which could have put you in the energy of feeling conflicted and defeated. But I don't feel like you're going to be conflicted and defeated for long because here comes the sun. You have Leo's energy showing up. Let's clarify Leo's energy. Please clarify the sun for Scorpio. Attached to Leo, you have Four of Cups energy. So it's representing the energy, maybe similar to feeling conflicted and defeated. Um, it's a limiting energy, right? Her focus is on this one cup right here. So she's oblivious to the three cups behind her. Three cups represents the energy of you know, friends, right? So maybe you've invested your energies in a direction that maybe took you away from some of your other friends and you were focused on one person right here in that Four of Cups. But it's representing the energy of feeling like there's just more out there in life, right? Beautiful energies and experiences to take on. But when you're in the Four of Cups energy, you're feeling somewhat disconnected from those energies. Coming in attached to the Four of Cups, you have the High Priestess representing your intuition. So Scorpio, you're being reminded of your intuition right here. You know, it's like intuitively, you may know, I made, the, I made the bad choice, I made the wrong choice. Now I'm stuck in this energy of feeling conflicted and defeated and, oh, I just wish I would have, you may be saying this to yourself, I wish I would have went after what it is you want in life, right? And maybe because you didn't, you're in this Four of Cups energy. You know, it's almost like 
it's it's it, you're looking back on it right with maybe some energies of regret saying uh, i wish i wasn't so focused on this one choice right here and it's a choice that wasn't serving you very well um, I want the sun to come back again, right? I need to step away from the fears, the worries, and the concerns. And at the end of the day, you need to believe that the sun is going to come back for you. So, you know, if you're in that energy where you're second guessing and you're questioning that, listen to your intuition, right? And how would I define and describe your intuition? You know, it's interesting because um, I've really been listening to my own intuition lately. Uh, and it's it's really kind of fascinating because, you know, I've noticed when I have when I have a lot going on in life, you know, you know how we all have our inner voice in our head. Um, I'm no exception there. I have my own inner voice that's going on. And I've noticed a lot of times, right, if, if there's a lot happening for me in my life, I may be interacting with others, right, and a comment gets made. And before I ever say anything verbally, my voice goes off in my head. Right, so I hear something first, and I've and I've found that a lot of times when whatever it is I'm hearing, it really doesn't apply to what's happening at the time, but it applies to me in the big picture of what's going on. So I share that with you because some of you may relate to that. So you're being reminded of your intuition right here, you know, uh, and it's your intuition. You know, she's surrounded by butterflies. So if I'm in the energy of feeling conflicted and defeated. Maybe I'm going to just follow those inner feelings of mine so that, and what are my inner feelings going to tell me about why I'm feeling so stuck in this energy and feeling bored? All right, Scorpio, let's continue to clarify. Please clarify conflict and defeat for Scorpio. Okay, makes total sense. Coming in next for you, Scorpio, you have the hangman energy. So this is representing Pisces energy. For those of you that may can be connected, have a, an important Pisces in your life, right? So I'm in the energy of, of the hangman where it's like I feel conflicted and defeated, right? And maybe I'm feeling so stuck and conflicted and defeated that I don't know what choice to make. I don't know what to do, right? This is representing that energy of being stuck, right? And one of the reasons some of you may be in the energy of feeling stuck is you're stuck in the past, right? Six of cups coming in attached to the hangman, right? So I'm thinking back on the past. Maybe in the past, what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about this decision that I made, right? I should have went a different direction right here. Okay, that's gonna put you in the energy of solitude. So let's move down and clarify solitude. Please clarify solitude for Scorpio. Coming in next, you have the Devil card. So Capricorn's energy wanted to show up for you. And then coming in attached to the Devil card, you have the energy of the Magician. So Capricorn's energy, what does it do? You're being encouraged right, to take time out. Right? I'm gonna take some solitude in my life right here. Really think about things. And what you're being encouraged to do is if you're in that energy of feeling somewhat stuck, conflicted and defeated, you're gonna think about the things that make me passionate in life, right? The things that get me excited in life. And I feel like intuitively, Scorpio, you're probably already aware of this because look at these figures behind him that are rushing up the stairs, right? And I feel like the reason they're in such a hurry is because they connected with their passion. So you're being encouraged, right, to go inward and find out what it is you're passionate about in life. And if you can go after what it is you're passionate about, you have the, the ability to create and manifest it with the energy of the magician coming in next. These are really good energies coming in for you, Scorpio. Tell us more about Scorpio solitude, please. Next, you have the chariot card, right? So once you're in the energy where it's like I've connected with my passions, right? Now I want to create, I want to manifest. How does the creation and the manifest begin? Well, it all begins by your ability to be able to visualize it, right? I need to see it happening, see it taking place. Uh, I need to see these changes that you want in your life coming in. So, you know, depending on, and it'll be different for each and every one of you, but Scorpio, think about, you know, what changes do you want to make in your life? It'll be different for each and every one of you, but give yourself the opportunity to really see 
these changes, again, all in your mind, coming in, these changes are being pulled by the chariot, right? So it's your balanced energy that's going to bring the changes in. And I feel like you're able to better balance your energy from feeling conflicted and defeated because you're going to take some time out. You're going to think about, right, what things make me passionate and excited in life. And then attached to the chariot card, here you have the two of wands, right? The courageous risk taker getting ready to set out and embark on a new direction. So Scorpio, really being encouraged to think about what direction you want to go in. What is it you want to create and manifest in your life? Get passionate. All right, Scorpio. Let's move down to power. Let's clarify Leo's energy. Please clarify power for Scorpio. Queen of Swords wanted to come out. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra energy. I mean, the Queen of Swords coming out, it makes sense, right? Because a lot of times... You know, if you're in the, the energy where I feel a little conflicted and defeated, well, some of us can be in that energy where I feel like I've lost my power or one step further, I may be in the energy where I'm feeling somewhat powerless right here. So Queen of Swords coming out, this is a very determined energy, right? What is the Queen holding? She's holding a sword in this hand and a butterfly in the other hand. So she's going to take the sword and she's going to use that to cut away and to remove any energies in her life that are no longer serving her. You know, literally, what the energies that you're cutting away from your life, Scorpio, are these energies that put you in the energy where you feel somewhat conflicted and defeated here. Uh, because this is all about new beginnings, right? What's she holding in her other hand? She's holding a butterfly, a divine beginning. Let's clarify the Queen of Swords. Nine of Wands coming in attached to the Queen of Swords. So, Scorpio, you're going to embrace this Queen of Swords energy. I'm going to use the sword, cut away, and remove anything in my life that's no longer serving you, right? And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to, I want to pr really prepare myself for this next chapter that I'm stepping into. I'm going to take time now to prepare myself, give myself the strategic advantage of being on top of this hill. So once I'm above and on top of the hill, it gives me the opportunity so I can better see the energies that are approaching Right. And I feel like it's your ability to do that, that what it's going to do for you at the end of the day, Scorpio, is it's going to empower you, right? Because now you're visualizing it, you're seeing it. And if you can visualize it, and in that visualization, feel it emotionally and with feelings, it means you can create it. All right, tell us more about power for Scorpio, please. Tell us more about Scorpio, please. Gonna go after your passions, right? Knight of Cups coming in. And you're already, Scorpio, being encouraged to come to the realization of, of your ability to, to determine what exactly are you passionate about. And it's gonna be different for each and every one of you, but it's like you're gonna connect with these passions and then you're embracing the Knight of Cups energy which is representing the energy of your knight in shining armor, right? In motion, wanting to bring you something that you love, something that you're passionate about. Let's clarify the Knight of Cups. Please clarify the Knight of Cups energy for Scorpio. Will of Fortune wanted to come out, so Sagittarius energy just showed up. For those of you Scorpios that may be connected to a Sagittarius. Uh, so the Will of Fortune represents changes on the zodiac wheel the zodiac wheel spins and it spins off changes these are changes coming in that you've created you visualize and you're passionate about these changes okay what's it going to do it's going to open yourself up to having a lot of choices right choose wisely coming in next let's clarify choose wisely please clarify choose wisely for scorpio All right, Scorpio, here you have it. Four of Wands wanted to come out for you. So the Four of Wands is coming in attached to 
opening us of opening yourself up to having a lot of choices right new choices new experiences new opportunities so one of these choices and opportunities has the potential could be bringing you love right this is the marriage energy right here romance could be romance for some of you partnership you know really more than anything the energy that this represents is contract right so i'm going to be able to have the chance to contract myself to some type of new choice in your life let's clarify the four of wands please clarify the four of wands for scorpio death card coming in so scorpio's energy this is your energy by the way uh so your energy coming in attached to the four of wands so it's representing the energy of this is about a new contract right so in order for a new contract to come in whether that is a work contract or it could be a contract by way of a friendship or by way of a relationship um, something's coming to an ending here with the death card so it's almost like before this new contract comes in i need to bring an ending to something first let's clarify the death card please clarify the death card for scorpio nine of swords which is a limiting energy representing the energy of fear see this little bird right here right he's staring down at this sword and you have the eight swords that are stuck in the ground behind her this bird is waiting for her to get up and to pick up this sword and stick it in the ground, right? To allow this energy to pass. So what it's representing the energy of is some of you may be in the energy where I'm a little fearful, right? Of getting this contract and getting this commitment right here. And I'm thinking about it, right? And maybe, maybe this is why the hangman energy is coming in, right? You're thinking about it, feeling good in these energies, right? This awareness around his head. But I haven't made the choice and the decision yet because I'm stuck in the past, right? But here you're being encouraged to bring an ending to the past. And you're bringing an ending to the fear, the worries, and the concerns regarding contract. For some of you, will I find love again? Please clarify, choose wisely for Scorpio. Okay, we've got three energies coming into you, Scorpio. You have the energy of the Empress. So by way of Zodiac, this represents Libra or Taurus energy right here, right? But this is a very balanced energy. And I feel like your energy, Scorpio, becomes balanced when you can let go of the fear and the worries and the concerns. And it may be this new contract, right, that comes in that puts you in the energy where I feel my value and I feel my worth, right? And it makes sense that you would because you made the decision to go after your passions, what it is you want, you desire, rather than maybe what it, what others want. Now, attached to the Empress, you have Ace of Pentacles, right? So this is a beginning. This is your, your fresh start, and it's a tangible beginning, right? That you can live, feel, and experience. And attached to the Ace of Pentacles, you have the Knight of Swords. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra energy right here. Some of you may be connected to an Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. This is somebody who's pretty intelligent, right? Somebody who's a thinker, uh, somebody that knows their truth, right? And I feel like with King of Swords coming in attached to the Ace of Pentacles, King of Swords energy, you may be stepping into this beginning with King of Swords for some of you, right? And for others, this King of Swords energy is showing up for you. That you know that like, I know that I can believe in this beginning because I feel fantastic about this beginning because you're following your hopes, your wishes, and your desires. Look, at the end of the day, you can show up for other people, right? But it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be showing up for other people if it's not something that you're truly wanting for yourself. This is you going after what it is you want for you, creating this beginning, and now that you're in it, here's your truth. I knew that this beginning was here for you. All right, Scorpio. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the love and the support that you guys provide me here on this channel. If any of you are interested in a personal tarot reading, I just did one about an hour ago, I encourage you to reach out to me by way of email. If you just send me an email at treeoflifetarot, the number nine at gmail.com, I'll see that email open it up and reconnect with you and we'll schedule a time to set up your personal tarot reading. Okay, Scorpio, you guys are the best. 
thank you so much for all the love and the support. I hope you enjoyed this tarot reading. If so, give me a like and a subscribe, right? And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you enjoyed my energy and my style of tarot reading. Uh, okay, Scorpio, wishing you all the very best. It's a Monday afternoon. Go out, fresh new week. Make it a beautiful week. Embrace those energies of unconditional love. Trust in yourself. Believe in yourself. Overcome this energy of feeling somewhat conflicted and defeated because you're going to replace that energy with passion. Passion, that, things that you're passionate about in life, Scorpio. All right, and with this passion, you can create, you can manifest anything you'd like. Okay, wish you all the very best. Have a beautiful day. Thanks.